Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Lewis Glover for Combat Sports UK here once again with Cage Warriors bantamweight, Reese McEwen. Mate, I hoped in this time would be uh, we'd be speaking under different different circumstances. Uh, unfortunately, everyone knows now that you had to withdraw from your fight on Saturday at Cage Warriors 152 due to injury. So, first of all, first and foremost, how are you doing, mate? How how are you holding up? Yeah, I'm okay, mate. Thanks. It's uh, obviously gutted that I never got to fight on Saturday night. Um, but in terms of health wise, like I've still got a wee small um, hole in my leg. <laughs> Um, the, the infection still kind of going through that healing process so I'm just in the gym keeping my obviously I'm not training but um, being, being around classes and stuff like that watching mm-hmm. and keeping my mind busy and um, yeah re- resting up ready, trying to get uh, ready for the next fight date really yeah f- fair enough fair enough glad to hear that you're you know keeping yourself busy and, and things are going sort of as well as they could be in the circumstances for those who aren't aware uh Reese has had a had a staff infection. So, can you just tell us uh, a little bit about about that? Do you have any idea how it was? Uh, h- how you got the infection? It's just one of those bad luck things. Honestly, it sounds weird. It's like it came. Um, like I said, I finished my my hard training really on the Friday night. Um, I had a small a wee small lump in my shin, but it was just like a bit of swelling. Um, but that was just from like clashing shins, I think playing like mm-hmm. seven weights, guard and on shin kind of thing. It was just whatever. And then on Saturday morning, it looked a bit angry, red looking. Uh, there wasn't even a spot really, um, but it was just a wee bit inflamed and redness. So I took ibuprofen and I knew that uh, I knew that that could be like potentially dangerous, but it wasn't really worrying. Um, and then on the Sunday morning, it was just honestly like I had a really bad sleep. My whole leg was pulsing. I mean, I woke up on Sunday morning. Um, where that swelling was, it was like there was like a big um, basically the picture I posted on Instagram. Um, that was what came on Sunday morning. It just honestly like came so bad, and not only that, like my whole my up to it from my shin, the whole length of my shin and my ankle was like swollen with fluid, but my leg was like pulsing during the night. Uh, so yeah, I, I went to A and E and they gave me antibiotics because obviously ibuprofen wouldn't have tackled that itself. Yep. Um, and then throughout the day, it just got worse. Like I felt, I, I was starting to feel sick. I was shivering. Like I was honestly so cold. But I was kind of just downplaying it, thinking I'm cutting weight, in denial really. And mm-hmm. then I was walking about. I was honestly about half six. We went to the shops, me and my fiance, and I said to her, said, "Something's not right here. I'm struggling. I'm honestly struggling to walk. My whole leg is pulsing." And I went back up to A and E, and um, like the infection wasn't being contained; it was actually growing. The redness was going down my leg and stuff. Um, so then, it was just what. Honestly, you would think it came from training, but I don't really know. It's, it was honestly freaky. Like yeah. so I never trained that weekend at all, or or I never went to saunas or anything like that. It just pure blew up. Um, and then on the Sunday night, I was now like a lot of discomfort. Uh, and I was obviously worried, so I had to tell my coaches and stuff, and they told mm-hmm. me that I should tell Cage Warriors, and uh, like, Cage Warriors like, there's absolutely no way that you're going to be able to fight, and um, obviously, I'll be honest, like, see the fact that I'm still battling it now, it get, it, get, it gives me a lot of closure, that there was no way that I'd be yep. able to uh, fight on Saturday, see if it healed up by Saturday, I'd have probably been really down, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking I could have just fought that through, but I'll probably take me another seven Seven days, not even that, probably another 10 to 14 days to get back to training because I need to wait for that wee hole to close up completely on my skin. Yep. And, uh, infections are scary, man. Like, you can you can die with it if you are not treat if you don't treat it properly. So um, it is what it is. And like I said, I'm just uh, shifting my attention to the, the next fight date, recovering this and uh, getting back to training because I'm absolutely buzzing for it. Yeah, I can imagine. Glad that things are seemingly trending in the right direction. Of course, it was absolutely the right decision to not push forward and, and try and get on with the fight. So looking ahead to, to you know bet, better days for you, is it July that you're targeting at the next date? Because the last time we spoke, we, we know now names don't matter. Let's focus Let's focus on, on the date for you. So yeah. is, that, is, that, is, that, is that what's going to be, be happening July 21st in London? Is that what you're hoping for? Uh, I'm not sure what specific date. Like obviously, there's a few dates in July, but yeah. um, I spoke. To, I was obviously down at the show and stuff. And we spoke to Cage Warriors, and uh, July will definitely be the time for me to get back into it. And um, like if you look in July, like 
it's still what I think it's 10 11 weeks away so it's still plenty of time and I, I, I could be doing with obviously I could be doing with the time to rest and fetching but I do I did put a whole fight camp in and like I said that fight consumed me from April 15th from New Year's Day about the 3rd of January Cage Warriors told me I'd be fighting on the Manchester card and that consumed my life from that date so I need to make sure that I rest myself physically and mentally um, and then pick up the like p- pick up um to like basically rest up, recover to start a new fight camp in preparation for whatever date and joy that they give me. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. And do you have an ideal length of of the fight camp that you'd like to typically do? Is it eight weeks, six weeks? What do you usually work with? I always like um, I, I, it's never really rigid. Obviously, I'm always training, but sure. I would say in the last six weeks, I, I ramp I, I ramp it up like those five weeks before. I would say an eight week period, like um, oh. <laughs> The last year, if I go by last year for my fights, I, I had exactly 16 weeks between every fight. And I would use the first four weeks to basically be like a post-fight rehab. Mm-hmm. Like, make sure of downtime and then ease myself back into training. And then I would use the next four weeks to go 100%, like full on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would take like a few days downtime, like a wee deal week, and then smash the last six weeks of training. So I would say that um, six weeks is... Um, Six weeks, a six weeks fight camp would be a hundred percent. That's when all my, if you look at periodizing my training and stuff, that's when every day becomes a high day. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, six six weeks I feel, but when it comes to that eight week period, that's when you start cutting out, like um, going out for meals and restaurants and having extra treats and uh, and stuff <laughs> like that. But but with and then if you want to break that further, when we're about three four weeks out from the fight, I can feel my personality changing, like right. I'm shifting when I'm in the gym and stuff like that. Um, I can I can feel a change in my my competitiveness and my tunnel vision. It's like every time I'm I'm going to bed, for instance, I'm visualizing the fight that puts me to sleep. And um, like I say, my life gets consumed by it. And those uh, weeks coming up and, and the weeks leading up to the fight. That's really interesting. You obviously do some intentional mental exercises there with the visualization. So do you feel that that just sort of subconsciously changes your demeanor and your personality as you get closer? Or is that another conscious effort that you you really want to intentionally ramp up your competitive edge and, and, and how you carry yourself and sort of just how you go about your life on a, on, on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, obviously, I, I'm very big on visualization because mm. I, I want to make sure that when I'm experiencing that in the cage, even when I was watching the show on Saturday night, I was visualizing my feet going into the canvas and my skin touching the cage and taking the atmosphere in and listening to my music because when I'm experiencing that on fight night, I want my brain to be trained as if I've been there before, visualizing the shots, good shots, bad shots, positions, uh, like all the different positions that can come, like even small things like visualizing them getting my music wrong, like... Uh, they getting my name wrong, no entrance, everything that you could imagine. I try and mm-hmm. visualize that, um, and then, like I said, it just naturally in my head, like that. That's like a peaceful thought of going to sleep, and then visualizing the fights, transitions that can happen in the fight, walking out and stuff like that. So, um, and then I, I feel a shift. I don't force it. I just feel a shift in training. It's like there's like a mean face, like <laughs> almost in my head. That, right, the fight's coming soon time to ramp it up the intensity gets put up um, and you're kind of hitting that red zone every day so that's not sustainable to do throughout the no. whole year so there's only a small period of time when that hits that um, and I feel that like maybe three four weeks out from the fight um, and yeah so it's, it's an amazing feeling to be honest I actually like get kind of goosebumps when I talk about it that's incredible that's a really really awesome insight for us for us to have in terms of yeah your mindset and, and your preparation as, as you approach fight night you were there in manchester as you said and it looked f- at least from on, t- on television on ufc fight pass it was a brilliant night of fights it looked like the atmosphere was incredible did you did you have a great time watching the fights even though you would obviously desperately wanted to be in the cage and competing yeah absolutely obviously i kind of went through a mix of emotions like yeah to start the card off like when i was watching Ori evans fight i was i was obviously heavily invested in that fight uh, oh yeah, well emotionally as well because I wanted Rory to win he, he, um, I, I really had a lot of emotions attached to that fight because I'm obviously friends with him and I train with him when I'm down mm-hmm. in Wales and I was absolutely gutted for him that he never picked up that victory and um, I was just obviously like, hoping that he would be okay after the fight um, and then the rest of the card I thoroughly enjoyed like the Luke Riley fight was uh, electric um, and we were obviously cage side um, for most of the fights and then I caught up with some of the supporters that came down 
Um, but when I watched that coming event, um, I just, I could feel my, that demeanour, I tell you. Like, when I was watching that fight, I could just feel that competitive edge. Like, I, I wasn't enjoying the fights anymore. I wanted to be in there. That mm. That's when that kind of reality sunk in. That I, that's, that, that should have been me. Um, I can't allow myself to think like that because I wasn't in a fit state to fight. But like I said, I was enjoying the fights until that fight. And I was like, I want to be in there now. Like, I don't want to be here. Um, I don't want to be a fan right now. I want to be in there. So yeah. um, I, miss, I actually missed George Hardwick's fight because I was like, I said to my fiance, I was like, I, I want to go now because uh, this this isn't all, uh, where I want to be. I want to be in that cage. But overall, it was, a, it was, an, it was an excellent event. And um, yeah, it, it motivated me a lot to, uh, it gave me a lot of motivation um, and to get back in there. It was yeah, it was it was an excellent event. So, have you had an opportunity yet to to go back and watch the the co-main event? And and if you have, what were what were your thoughts on on the performance? Yeah, yeah, I went. I actually watched the majority of the fights yesterday um, on UFC Fight Pass. Mm-hmm. Um, and the co-main event beforehand, like I was kind of everybody obviously kept asking my opinion to see who I would think would win, and I I did think that Fletcher would win. I thought Fletcher would submit him. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and I says because I said the fight will go two ways. Like when I was preparing to fight Dan Doy, like he could be exceptional, absolutely exceptional, or maybe he's not as good as I've painted that picture to be in my head. Because for me to perform to the best of my ability, I need to implement, I need to insert fear in my head. Mm-hmm. So for instance, he was finishing guys with triangles. He had a judo background, and he was very good at um, like his past to victory for me was like the triangle element. Um, the he, he had a bit of a judo background, and they would always start his fight chaotic, put people under pressure. They would panic shoot, and then he was calm and close guard on bottom. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I, I I probably exaggerated that and made him out to be like this world class grappler, judoka, like <laughs> uh, fight IQ person because that plant seeds in my head and get the best out of me in training. Yep. So I said he's either that good and he he'll triangle Fletcher or whatever, or the reality is Fletcher will ride that wave and submit him and that's exactly what happened. So it was obviously um it was obviously a good fight and big respect to both guys for taking each other on five days notice because um a lot there's a lot to be said about that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it gets in there with, with very little notice is is extremely impressive. And that wasn't the only short notice uh, fight uh, on the card, you, you mentioned it earlier, the Luke, the Luke Rally versus Callum Parker fight was an absolute bomb burner. That first round c- could be could be round of the year for Cage Warriors. You'll do you'll do well to see to see a, a better five minutes of mixed martial arts than that. I th- oh, absolutely. Like, um, and I said that I think what the most impressive thing about Luke's fight and Luke's performance was obviously yeah, like he got tested and stuff like that. But more importantly, like you've seen the professionalism and you've seen his level. Um, how good he was because mm-hmm. see when he was getting dropped I said that I turned to my fiance and said he's getting stronger as the fight goes on um, and that can pff, like those those were big shots as well so he put on an ex- excellent performance and that's exactly the kind of performance that, that shows the level the, the level of someone so and props to his opponent man like coming in on a week's notice against a top prospect yeah and he he, he done it absolutely excellent of the performance in so many in more ways than one yeah it was it was, it was absolutely great and i'm sure i'm sure uh you know riley, riley will be feeling fantastic and and uh callum will uh will, will learn a lot from that as well and as you said absolute props to taking it on short notice we had some technical difficulties there ladies and gentlemen but we're back <laughs> and uh reese was just giving his assessment on on uh, george hardwick and his future with cage warriors and almost with all certainty he'll be heading to the the big three-letter organization the ufc in due course yeah, I said that to everybody who's coming down. I said, this will be the last time you see this guy on this uh, on cage. Well, he's, he's got to be sent to the UFC after this. And it was a, it was a good opponent that he fought, um, that he was matched against. And I think like, George Hardwick, there's not, not much more to be said about that. He, he absolutely deserves a shot. The UFC has got to be next. He's a, a, an excellent champion, uh, an excellent fighter, and he deserves that UFC contract. 100%. You, uh, I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, Reese. You've been very generous with your time, as always. Um, no, thank, we, you. Thank, thank you for coming on, talking to us. We wish you the, you know, the, the, the speediest recovery possible, and we look forward to seeing you get back inside the Cage Warriors uh, cage in, in, in the month of July. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk again in, in the lead up to, to whoever you'll be fighting next come July.
Definitely, I'll always make time for you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Reese. Thank Take you. care, mate. Bye-bye. You too, bye.